Welcome to Ready, Set, Jets. Every week, we're taking a deep dive into the most recent Jets press conferences and analyzing every word, every pause, every hidden message. And for that, we turn to a 10-year NFL vet, former Jets quarterback and analyst on Jets Late Night. Jay Fiedler, how you feeling today, man? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. Looking forward to it. You, you got your detective's hat on. You know, we're going to go, you know, <laughs> in the weeds to try to figure might, things out. I might have to pull out the Sherlock Holmes hat one of these days. I'm good with that. So here's the thing. This has been a, a major topic here this entire season because in the offseason, the Jets signed McCall Hardman, a speedy receiver who many fans thought would be a weapon for this team. But instead, he's got just one reception on 22 total snaps this season. In fact, he was even inactive last week. And now there are reports the Jets are shopping him. Coach Sala was asked about reports by Rich Samini of ESPN and why they haven't been able to use Hardman's skills by Connor Hughes of SNY. He's uh, uh, working, competing, um, and, uh, and until someone upstairs says otherwise, we're, we're going to do our best to try to find ways to get him involved. I think what we're missing the opportunity on is to talk about Xavier Gibson. Um, Xavier Gibson, since he's gotten here, um, has done a phenomenal job with regards to his kick return ability uh, and proven that he can do that. And, uh, you know, just his attention to detail and the way he's been attacking every day and, uh, um, and evolving. And he's a young guy. He's hungry. He's playing fast. And if you guys have noticed, he's getting a lot more opportunity on the football field. And he's going to continue to get a lot of opportunity because when the ball's in his hands, he's pretty darn special, too. Okay, a couple of things here for you to dissect because not only did Sala not downplay the whole rumor thing, um, you know, he, he certainly wanted to talk a little bit about Gibson. And I just wonder if this is a situation where they sign Hardman back in March and then after the draft you get Gibson and then Gibson has kind of stepped his game up and maybe some of the plays that role that was laid out for Hardman has been kind of stolen by Gibson. Well, certainly. I think, you know, when you signed Hardman, you expected him to come in. He was going to be your returner, your third or fourth uh, receiver out on the field. Uh, and then, you know, they ended up signing Cobb uh, uh, after the draft, who has stepped in uh, as the third receiver, obviously uh, knows uh, the offense a, a little bit better uh, coming from uh, Green Bay, where, uh, you know, he was he worked under Hackett uh, previously. Uh, and then you also got uh, Gibson, who has stepped up, and uh, you know he's a rookie. You never know how your rookies are gonna uh, are gonna turn out, and you know he's certainly uh, been electric with the ball in his hands. He's got to do a better job uh, protecting the ball a little bit uh, lately. But uh, uh, you know certainly they like him from a special team standpoint, uh, especially you know as their returner, as as a guy who could be a game breaker. Uh, we saw that in the Buffalo game. Uh, you know, with, with with the game winner, and uh, uh, you know, certainly, you know, that is really, you know, it really has become a numbers game for McCall Hardman. Uh, you know, the Jets are focusing a little bit more on the run; they're getting three tight ends uh, on the active roster. So, you know, as a fourth receiver uh, who's not going to be a returner, it just, you know, the numbers don't work out to, to have him activated all the time. Yeah. I mean, the numbers game is, it's always very tight trying to figure out which guys are going to make the final 45 on the day of the game. All right. When we come back, we're not done talking about this. We're also going to hear McColl's side of things. And, um, and I think the Jets fans are going to be happy to hear how he's handling it. That's next on Ready, Set, Jets. All right, so the past few seasons, we have seen Jets wide receivers that have not been too happy with their role. Both Denzel Mims and Elijah Moore had trade requests, and those played out in the media and at times were a distraction for the team. So Jets fans, uh, Jets fans should absolutely be happy to hear how McCall Hardman is addressing his lack of playing time and trade rumors. I just really up the coaches and the coaching staff to, you know, to see what fit to use me and how they would use me. And right now, you know, um, it's probably just better options on their end that they feel like or they're more comfortable with certain people. So um, it's just up to me to just keep working. Like to me, I just want to play, just want to get on the field and do some things. So it, whether it's here or somewhere else, um, I don't make that call. So whatever happens, happens. But, you know, I'm, I'm just work every day. And whenever I get that chance, I'm going to prove it. 
All right, so the coach is saying the right thing. The player is saying the right thing. I mean, this just goes to prove that not every divorce in the NFL has to be messy. And I'm wondering how much of a benefit this has to be to both Zach and the rest of the offense when they don't have to worry about this distraction of a disgruntled player talking about not getting his playing time, no matter whether he thinks it's completely due to him or not. Yeah, well, I mean, that was a great answer by uh, Hardman. Great attitude by him uh, that, that you like to see in the locker room. Uh, certainly, he's playing the good soldier uh, act right now. Uh, you know, and, and as, as much as, as, you know, some people in the media trying to kind of create a distraction. And that's, uh, you know, and that's what happens, especially in the New York market. Uh, uh, you know, you got to have storylines every week. And, uh, you know, the media is going to try and come up with it uh uh, inside the locker room, uh, outside the locker room, talking about it. It's up to the guys in the locker room to make sure that that uh, doesn't become a, a, a bigger distraction. Uh, uh, you know, guys are going to hear it. Uh, the quarterback's going to hear. The rest of the offense is going to uh, hear uh, everything. And uh, McCall Hardman, uh, you know, certainly uh, having a great answer uh, for that and having a great attitude uh, will help. And, and, you know, like I say, you never know, you know, when his opportunity might come. Uh, you know, the, the, the Jets coaches might say, hey, uh, you know, uh, Gibson's, uh, uh, you know, got to hold on to the ball. If he has, you know, one or two more fumbles, uh, uh, they might go to Hardman uh, uh, as the returner. And uh, he's going to have some opportunities. And, uh, you know, that's when whether he's here or, or whether he uh, gets moved, you know, he's going to have an opportunity to show, uh, you know, either the Jets or, another team that uh you know he's uh, he he's you know, the guy that everyone thought he was coming from uh, Kansas City. Well, Jay, now that you're a member of the media, I can let you in on this little secret <laughs> that every Monday, we all in the Jets beat writers, we all stand around a cauldron and just throw things in there just to see if we could stir the pot a little bit, just to see what brew we can come up well, with. That's I, how I it works. I in the NFL for 10 years. I know <laughs> that. Uh, you know, I was off the other side. I answered all those questions. And, and don't, th don't think that I didn't, you know, understand uh, where all all the angles were coming from all right well one player on the offensive side that really is getting his due is Brees Hall because last week at Denver he rushed the ball 22 times a career high 177 yards another career high and he finally gets in the end zone but he did let the reporters know he feels like he left a little meat on the bone I probably should have had like three touchdowns but uh I was trying to cut back instead of just beating them with speed and uh you know, I realized kind of like in, before halftime that they were kind of playing me for the cutback and stuff like that. So then once the run, long run happened, I just ran right past them because I knew they were hanging on my back shoulder playing me for the cutback. Okay, look, I know everybody was focusing on Zach's struggles, but should we have been focusing a little bit more on the running game struggles and trying to get Brees a little more touches earlier on? Well, I'll tell you what, I, I don't know how much struggles, uh, you know, Brees all had last week. Uh, he, he looked pretty good to me, so... Uh, you know, it, it's great to, to, to hear him talk about it uh, uh, and, and understand that he has such a great football IQ that he understands, you know, where his misses were and, uh, you know, where his chances were to make things happen. And when he had that chance uh, later on in the game in the second half, uh, uh, springing that big run, right. he was able to do it. And, and, and instead of cutting back, taking the outside uh, lane and, and, and outrunning the the safety to the sideline. Man, he is explosive. It's just wonderful to see him running in the open space. When we come back, uh, I'll tell you how the Jets could make history this Sunday, but why they, uh, the, the pass really doesn't matter to the 23 Jets. That's next on Ready, Set, Jets. So the Jets are hosting the Eagles this Sunday, and there's a weird quirk here because the Jets are 0-12 lifetime against the Eagles and that does include a 33-18 loss back in Salah's first season so the head coach was asked by Dennis Wozniak of Associated Press if he'll use this winless streak dating back 50 years as motivation for the team no uh, what what's cool is the NFC champs are walking into our building and uh, it's an opportunity for us to get after we've played you know some good football teams we took uh, Buffalo and Kansas City down to the wire we got another great one coming in and uh, um, you know, so it's, you know, hopefully it's a, uh, a, hopefully a fun game for everybody and hopefully we're on the right side of it. 
Okay, it, it is a weird anomaly here, Jay. The fact that they are 0-12 lifetime against the Eagles. I just wonder, though, if the biggest zero that they're focusing on is the fact that the Eagles are undefeated and 4-0 and on this season right now. Do you think that the Jets players look at history as motivation as opposed to who they're playing and what's in front of them right now? Yeah, I think in this case, they're, they're looking at the, the defending NFC champions, uh, undefeated team coming in, one of the top teams uh, in the NFC right now, one of the top teams in the NFL uh, right now, certainly. Uh, so, you know, they, they got a big challenge ahead of them uh, with that. The fact that they're 0-12, uh, you know, they play this team once every three, four years, uh, how the schedule works out. So, you know, guys that, that, were, that played them last time, you know, probably most of them weren't even there uh, uh, for that. It's not like a division rival uh, like we saw a couple of weeks ago with New England where you have a losing streak and you're playing a team uh, twice a year. You're going to focus and see, you know, see that team uh, over and over again. Uh, and that becomes a little bit more motivation to break a streak like that uh, than this than this case is. By the way, I misspoke. I said 4-0. They're actually 5-0. and So give them another win. But that's that's the end of it. That's the end of the winning streak at, at this point. I just I wonder when you look at this Eagles team, how dominating this offense looks to be, especially with a quarterback that offers that ability to run. Well, certainly, uh, you know, they, they've been one of the most dynamic uh, offenses over the past few years. Jalen Hurts has, has really stepped his game up, uh, uh, certainly last year, leading them uh, to the Super Bowl. Uh, and, you know, they do such a great job in the run game and then, you know, playing off of that, uh, uh, allowing Jalen Hurts uh, to, to, to use the <laughs> – uh, to to use the play action and, and get the ball downfield uh, to some of their solid receivers. See, I thought that you were going to use tush push as a major yeah. reason why they could win the game. Jay, thank you so much. We're going to do this all again next week. And don't forget, Jets Late Night comes your way Sunday after the late news. We'll see you next week right here on Ready, Set, Jets.